Hello again, I am Blunty. Okay, so I've been back and forth on this a little bit. Many of you will know by now that a uh, big publication, The Verge, published a YouTube video yesterday about how to build a $2,000 PC. Uh, and pretty much all of the tech community here on YouTube and Reddit and elsewhere immediately lost their shit because it is full of really, really terrible advice and appears to be constructed by someone who has never built a PC before, or if they have, they've been taught very, very wrong, or they've glanced at a, a, a how-to thing on a cue card off the side of the screen and just not understood anything. Either way, it is full of really bad advice. I mean, advice that could lead to you damaging hundreds of dollars worth of equipment if you follow their instructions. And, you know, I made a few Twitter posts yesterday about it, a couple of them mocking them mercilessly and comparing them to the uh, PC that I built live on stream yesterday as this video of theirs was being published. And at least one tweet that was kind of tongue-in-cheek, trying not to mock them too harshly, but suggesting they watch my own how-to video, which I published about this time last year, which is much more useful and full of much more useful advice and more detailed advice about how and why and, you know, to do this thing and just demystifying the PC building process for newbies uh, in a really good way. I'm really proud of that video. So I did my thing on Twitter and I went to bed and I got up this morning and the video is still there. They've turned off ratings and they've turned off comments. So anyone coming to that video, if they are a complete newbie looking for advice from a trusted big brand uh, source and if they watch this video, there's no comments down below to tell them how much of it is terrible, terrible, terrible advice they should not follow because they may destroy, damage, or otherwise uh, uh, hinder the PC they're trying to build. And the video is still up. So when I noticed that this morning, my first instinct was to do a complete friggin' teardown of them. And the YouTube algorithms are still pushing the hell out of that video. I keep seeing it everywhere. And there's, there's dozens of reaction videos to them with people just watching the video and going, oh, that's a bad idea, ha ha ha. Reaction videos are worthless content, by the way. So what I'm gonna do is sort of go through all the crappiest stuff they did, the terrible advice they did, and offer my advice about why that is terrible advice and why people are mocking them. And like the guy on camera, whatever his friggin' name was, I saw a Twitter post of his and he claimed that all of the silly little mistakes in the video were due to the scheduling. You know, he didn't have long to film it and they weren't allowed to do reshoots, but guess what? None of that reshooting wouldn't have fixed the bad advice he's giving. That's him, not the production. That's him not knowing what the he's doing and and him trying to make excuses for it saying oh yeah no we fixed that after we shot it but we weren't allowed to do reshoots no if you know it's wrong and you left the video up there you are not only irresponsible but culpable for anyone who follows your instructions and damages their shit and it makes me furious it's it's, it's unconscionable they haven't taken responsibility for their horrible advice but i'm getting sidetracked so first piece of bad advice is he actually recommends using a pocket knife, a Swiss army knife specifically as a screwdriver. He doesn't recommend going and getting a regular screwdriver. Maybe he didn't have one to hand, the shooting schedule was very tight, didn't have the right tools, couldn't go get one, fine. But to actually recommend people that they use a Swiss army knife, he said they use a Swiss army, that's idiotic. Wrong tool for the wrong job. If you're trying to put a computer together with a Swiss army knife, the extra bulk of that lopsided handle and everything's gonna make your life a lot more difficult Trying to get the screws into sort of some of those tight to reach places, like some of the top screws on the motherboard, for example. Bad advice. Not dangerous advice, but stupid advice. Another really bad piece of advice, not dangerous, not going to harm anything, but really stupid advice, was the little plastic protector that's over the socket on the motherboard. He just threw that away. You might need that. You really do need to hang on to that if your motherboard is faulty. If your motherboard develops a fault and you need to send it back under warranty or RMA or whatever, you need to put that back on the motherboard to protect those contact pins for the CPU. More than a few big brand motherboard manufacturers will not accept warranty returns without that because without that, there's no protection to the pins when it's traveling. So they don't know if any damage that's happened to those pins is your fault the courier's fault, or that's how they got it from the shop. You need that plastic little thing. You hang on to it. You put it in the box, you put it on a shelf, somewhere safe. Bad advice. Another piece of really stupid stuff, he was acting all sort of elitist and special about the 8700K CPU. He got like it was some sort of rare element. You can just go buy those. Like literally, I could go to pccasegear.com right now and just buy one and have it delivered tomorrow. Just 
not bad advice, not dangerous advice, but God, it makes you seem like such a wanker. Also makes you seem like you have no idea what you're talking about. Another bit of bad advice and an example of how this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, pulled out the RAM, he said, oh, I picked this RAM because it has LEDs on it. For a start, that's a stupid reason to pick RAM. I like LEDs on my RAM, obviously, but that's a stupid reason to pick RAM. The second thing he said is, it's, oh, it's really fast RAM. It's 2666 megahertz, which is the second slowest type of DDR4 RAM you can buy off the shelf. If you want really, really fast RAM, you get 3000 or 3200 or whatever. That's not really, really fast RAM. Just another example uh, of exposing just how little he actually knows what he's talking about. Choosing an M.2 drive because he can put it in the motherboard and you don't need any extra wires because wires are messy and ugly. That's a reasonable thing to do. That is one of the reasons I like M.2 drives. I mean, I like them mostly because they're incredibly fast, but it's also nice that they don't have extra cables to try and cable manage. But here's the thing. He said he chose that drive to avoid messy cables. This is the job he did of cable management. I don't care if his excuse is, oh, rust production schedule. No, that's bad build technique. You cable manage as you're building and it doesn't look that bad. You then go back to the building cable manage afterwards to tidy everything up, of course. But if you were properly cognizant of what you were doing, cable management as you were building. And that case, by the way, that case he's using, I've got a predecessor of that case. I've got the A240. This is sort of a, an updated version of that with more glass and stuff on it. That case is specifically designed with tons of space in the back for cable management. It's one of the reasons I picked to build the A240 A in the first place a couple of years back when I did a different build. It has so much cable management space. There is no excuse for not cable managing as you're building. I don't care how rushed you are. It doesn't take long to do. Just another example demonstrating that this guy has no friggin' idea what he's doing. But to pile that cable mess on top of his excuse for, oh, it's got no, got no cables on the M.2 drive, that's why I chose it. That's ridiculous. Laughable. Now we get to the actual dangerous stuff, the incredibly bad advice. It goes to install the PSU. There's a couple of little rubber pads on the bottom of the case he's using. He claims those rubber pads are there to stop the, place, uh, the PlayStation power supply unit from shorting out on the chassis of the case ridiculous that case around your PSU is not live. Look, not getting shot, not getting shot. Woo! Those pads, those little rubber pads in the case are for vibration dampening. Power supplies have fans in them. Fans sometimes cause vibrations to go through the case, which can make them feel louder than they actually are if they hit sort of a residence or something like that. Those pads are just to dampen that vibration from the PSU fan. They're not there to prevent the uh, PSU external box to shorting out. Not only that, <laughs> immediately after saying that, as he's installing the PSU, the case makes contact with the power supply anyway on the back where he screws it into the case, making a nice metal mechanical connection. Apparently that doesn't short it out, but the sides will. Again, no idea what he's talking about. Incredibly bad advice dangerous advice to tell people that because if they get a case that doesn't have those little rubber pads as most cases don't by the way they're going to freak out and they're going to start sort of jamming i don't know bits of paper in there or something which is a fire hazard just to make sure it doesn't short out on the case you never know what newbie's going to do with bad advice the other thing he did with the psu is he installed it backwards power supplies have a fan on one side cases are usually designed to accommodate that fan as indeed the case he was using is he installed it backwards, so the fan was sitting up against nothing, basically. It had no way to draw any decent amount of air into the power supply to keep it cool. <sighs> Incredibly dangerous advice. It will make the PSU run far hotter than it should, and perhaps, under the most extreme circumstances, be a fire hazard. Installing the radiator for the all-in-one liquid cooler. He takes the long screws, which are designed to go through the fan, because fans are quite thick, and into the radiator. He put those as the case mounting fans screwing all the way through the radiator. What he risked doing there was not only damaging the cooling fins responsible for helping that radiator actually be cool, but he could have punctured the radiator and caused a leak. It is incredibly bad advice to do that. Seems like he got away with it, lucky, but anyone else following that advice could potentially destroy their $100, $200 all-in-one uh, water cooler and whatever else it leaks on. 
Another example of very bad advice, dangerous advice, advice that could damage your system permanently, is his application of thermal paste. He went on to say that you know, the all-in-one coolers, like the one he was using, often come with thermal paste pre-applied to the, to the contact plate. His advice was, that's never enough. Wrong. It is exactly the right amount. That's why they put it on there. So they get it right and you don't have to worry about it. But he goes and puts more thermal paste, a different thermal paste. So he's mixing two different kinds of thermal paste, which is never a good idea in the first place because of the physics involved there. But smushing them two together, creating air bubbles, puts way, 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 way too much on the CPU, even even if the pla even even if what the, the heatsink was putting on didn't already have pre-applied stuff. What he applied to the CPU alone was like four times as much as you needed. Incredibly stupid and dangerous. So two kinds of thermal paste, way, way, way too much thermal paste. That thermal contact is going to be incredibly inefficient. That CPU is going to run far hotter than it should, which could lead to thermal throttling, which could lead to incredibly shitty performance because the CPU winds itself down, makes itself slower so it doesn't overheat and damage itself. So you're getting worse performance because you put way, way, way too much thermal paste on. Doubling up on thermal paste and two different kinds of thermal paste. Not only that, but if you look at the picture they posted of the completed system, he missed out one of the screws on the actual water block that goes onto the CPU. So it's not actually making proper contact with the CPU. It will be a little bit lopsided perhaps, and that will cause... Uh, uh, uneven distribution of heat to the contact plate. It will exacerbate that overheating issue even more. And even if he fixed that after shooting because of shooting constraints or whatever, it's still irresponsible to show it like that. And it's still stupid to show it like that without noticing. It takes like three seconds to put the extra screw on for crying out loud. How do you miss doing that? It's got four screws. How, do you, how when you're building it, even if you're being filmed and under pressure and under time crunch, how do you go one, two, three? Yeah, that's enough. This extra fourth one, I don't have time for that. Idiotic, irresponsible, stupid, ignorant. Oh, I almost forgot the RAM. He was using a motherboard with four RAM slots, two sets of dual channel RAM. RAM is these days designed to work in dual channels. So you put two pieces of RAM together and the system uses them in sort of a parallel way to make it more efficient, basically. Without sort of explaining the technical details of it, ignore the leaf blower out the window there. But he had obviously never built a system before because he put both piece, uh, both uh, RAM modules in slots right next to each other, which means they're both running in single channel mode, which means they're running in extremely poor performance mode. Uh, that RAM is not working as efficiently as it could. And anyone following his advice and looking at what he's doing, going, oh, that's the way you do it, is idiotic. Not only that, but he had the manual next to him while he was doing it, surely. Even if you've never built a computer before, surely you would look at the manual. The manual, every motherboard manual will clearly state in very certain terms, you must put dual channel RAM in the appropriate sockets, otherwise it's not going to work properly. Some motherboards won't even boot if you do it wrong. They'll go, they'll go to you know, register the memory and go, well, well, this isn't right. I can't use this memory in this configuration. This is stupid. And it won't boot properly. Some motherboards do, as his probably did, obviously, because he was testing it after the video. But that's incredibly bad advice. It will harm the performance of your system. Oh, and going back to the beginning of the video, I forgot about this one. He recommends using an anti-static strap, zap strap, some people call them, which is good advice. Not essential, but it's good advice. A little bit of peace of mind to make sure your own static electricity doesn't accidentally damage components, which can happen. It's rare, very rare, but it can happen. Some people really insist on wearing an anti-static strap, especially if you're building computers all day long. I don't tend to use one. However, as he was demonstrating how to put on an anti-static strap, he put on one of those little rubber band charity bands. It wasn't connected to anything. It wasn't grounded to anything. It was just a piece of silicon. That's not anti-static. That does nothing. Absolute gobsmacking ignorance from this, this moron. This, this complete buffoon. I mean, how, how is a Livestrong bracelet supposed to ground you? <laughs> you idiot. How embarrassing for you. Anyway, I think that's most of the stuff I remember. I should have I should have watched it again and taken notes, but honestly, I don't, I don't think I could sit through it again. I honestly don't think I could sit through that, that garbage fire again. And coming back to what I opened with, okay, it's 
it either triggers you and makes you really angry or it's funny and how bad it is and maybe it's a secret parody just for the sake of clicks so they can get another video to follow it up with and go oops it easy that was just a joke here's how to do it properly ha 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 it's still irresponsible to leave that video up there with all that terrible dangerous advice advice that can damage your equipment advice that can cost you money if you're following their advice really wish that leaf blower would go away it is irresponsible to, for them to leave that video up there with the comments turned off so nobody can to put a counterpoint up there and say, hey, newbies, this is why you shouldn't follow this video. They've turned off the ratings so people can't sort of glance at the ratings and go, well, there might be something suspect going on here. I better look into this a bit further. But they are using their, 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 their branding, their influence, and their sponsor, Capital One. How embarrassed must they be to be attached to such a disastrous fucking video that is just not all press is good press by the way <laughs> it was a sponsored video by capital one and i just it is offensive to me that they are so stubbornly leaving that thing up there to lead people astray and possibly cost people hundreds of dollars of money are they legally uh, vulnerable if someone follows their instructions and completely destroys their computer uh, the CPU overheats, it doesn't run properly, the, you know, the thing doesn't boot properly, they've, they've caused a leak in their radiator. Uh, 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 it's... I mean, how many people have to follow their instructions and ruin their shit for a class action to happen? They need to delete that video, they need to make an apology. Or, they need to just hire one of the countless tech tubers out there who do know how to build a system. I, personally, have done how to build a system for beginners as a sponsored video. The one I talked about in the beginning of the video, I did that last year for MSI. I've done live builds repeatedly on, on Twitch and stuff like that. And yesterday I just double streamed to Twitch and YouTube doing a live build of a PC right there. It, it looks great. Here's my cable management compared to theirs, by the way. This only took me two hours to build and you know, simultaneously stream and film and everything. I've, I've done uh, another thing for MSI when, when me and uh, Pindapanda went to uh, Taiwan and we did a build together. We we you know re recorded that in about an hour as we built the PC together. She was a uh, well not a complete dude. She'd built a computer many years before, but she'd forgotten most of the useful stuff. So I was sort of leading both of us through the build process there. And it's it's not difficult to make a beginner friendly video about PC building. It's not difficult just to get shit right, and it's not difficult just to do what the Verge did and feed out incredibly bad advice and really stubbornly stick to it and refuse to admit fault and just throw up excuses and hide any uh, uh, counterpoints and, 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 and good advice from other people watching their videos so they can protect newbies out there from the incredibly stupid and bad advice. The Verge is dangerous, irresponsible, stupid, ignorant, uh, and they've just ruined their reputation, basically. No one who knows anything about tech should ever read or watch anything they ever do again because they've just demonstrated they're willing to put out misinformation and stand by it and they don't care so long as it gets clicks. It is vile. But now I've said my piece, I've talked over the leaf blower. I have to go out this morning so I'm in a rush so I don't have time to re-record this to get rid of the leaf blower noise. But at least my advice is good. Uh, I am Blunty and we'll catch you next time. Hopefully now I've got that out of my system, I can get on with my time and just not have to think about these, 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 these irresponsible morons anymore. I can just get on with my day, hopefully.